Get Gutsy episode number 130 with Tia Johnson on Overcome Energetic Blocks. Welcome to Get Gutsy. I'm your host, Jenny Fennig, and I am so excited to be on this journey with you. A cutting edge show blending business and spirituality, Get Gutsy serves up a potent blend of stories, lessons, and tips to help you make a massive impact in the world through your soul's work and your inspired life. No more going it alone, no more excuses. The world needs more brave women saying yes to leadership. Are you with me? Good. Let's get gutsy now. Hey, y'all, Jenny here. Welcome back to the show. Super excited to be with you. Hey, I'm starting to do these little intros before we go into the conversations with our guests because I really want to have these heart to hearts with you and just tell you what's going on, what's going on, and, and give you some little inside perspective on where I am, what's happening in the business, and give you some inspiration for what's possible when you really commit to your mission. So first off, I had an amazing weekend. I have the songs from the musical Annie in my head, basically on a repeated loop. It's a hard knock life for us. It's a hard knock life for us. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think I want to be a singer, dancer, actress, like in a future lifetime or something. Anyway, my friends put on this production of Annie and it was so freaking good. I saw it three nights in a row. My kids saw it two nights in a row. (laughs) These are friends that we met through our kids' school and eventually they started homeschooling. Now, if you know about my journey, you know that recently we started homeschooling my oldest son, Sean, who's in second grade. We got here kind of through this twisty experience that I was not expecting, and it was really hard for me at first, and I was really freaked out. And I honestly felt like, you know, if I were to start homeschooling and be open about the fact that we were doing this, that, you know, maybe my community, my tribe might take me less seriously. Maybe my business would you know, slow up. And what's happened has been completely different, which has been blowing me away. But more than that, homeschooling is so right for my son. And I am very grateful that we have these amazingly creative, warm, generous, amazing friends who also homeschool their kids. And we have like more and more people who are joining this journey in our community, which is like, it's just a dream for us. And I want to clue you in on a little piece of news that we're we've decided to homeschool my my middle son Luke next school year so we'll have a third grader and a first grader being homeschooled next year my daughter Kate who's three is going to start nursery school um, at our fabulous Waldorf school it's an amazing early childhood program so I feel like I've done a lot of work to get to this point we had to figure out what we wanted to do my husband and I are on the same page we're really excited we're really committed and not only is it awesome for our family and for our kids but y'all, my business is growing. (laughs) It's growing. I've had to become so laser focused about what is worth my energy and my time and what is not. That is one of the greatest gifts you can bring to your business is focus and discipline around where your energy needs to go. I've stepped into my CEO role more deeply. I am making decisions that are scary but absolutely critical. I am dealing with elephants in the room that I know I have needed to deal with for so long, but I just haven't because I've tried to avoid it. And now it's like, okay, it's here. And, and this is going to get dealt with because my my energy is so important for this mission. And I simply don't have time to waste. I just don't. I am looking at my numbers. I am analyzing them. I'm asking a lot of questions. And my boundaries are a lot stronger. Oh my gosh. And let me tell you, if you want to know about, you know, what what you're made of, what kind of boundaries you need to have, um, how to really blaze through upper limits, launch a mastermind, okay? 
if you've been following me for some time, you know that I am in the the throes of, of enrolling for my mastermind, which is called Glow Right Now. It is the most sacred, deep work that I do. I adore the people who step forward into this mastermind. We journey together for six months. Not only do you grow your body of work and your business, but the personal growth work that we do together, the healing that takes place, the moves that get made, the creations that come through you, like a podcast or a book or a beautiful offer or your own mastermind or your course or your website or you name it. Like all these things go down and yet the healing that occurs and the connections that are made within our group, like the friendships that get that get made and and nurtured over time. And then the fact that we go on this freaking kick-ass retreat, like y'all this round we're going to Tulum, Mexico. OMG. Ah, so anyway, we're in the throes of enrollment for that. It has been fascinating and interesting and mind-boggling and everything because that's what happens when you put something like this out into the market. I've had to make some really interesting decisions. I've had some interesting conversations. I've had some amazing conversations. I've had some things happen that I'm like, what? Like literally, that is what happens when you enroll for a mastermind. If you've ever done it, you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever been through one, you know what I'm talking about. If you want to be served by me in this mastermind over the next six months, like now is the time. Stop waiting. Stop wondering. Stop disqualifying yourself. Now is the freaking time. Okay. Like literally we're closing the doors. We kick off in April. It's time. It's going to change your life. I don't say that lightly. I'm legit like straight up with you. This will be a game changer for you. Okay. So go to glowmastermind.com. If you're feeling those tingles inside of yourself, you know what to do. If I feel like you're a fit after you apply, we will get on the phone and we'll see. We'll see if we're going to do this thing. We have a few spots left. I have already bought the welcome gifts. I went to my favorite new age uh, store over the weekend and they literally jumped off the shelf into my hands and I'm like, okay, here they are. So I would love to send one to you and uh, go on this epic journey. All right, glowmastermind.com, the time is now. And the time is also now for our amazing episode with Tia Johnson. If you are into woo, 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 this episode's for you. We're talking dreams, angels, crystals, goddesses, and your spiritual healing journey. Oh my goodness, we are talking about intuition and energetic blocks and how to move through them. And we go into her journey, of course, because you know that I love asking those questions about how did you get from where you were to where you are now? That to me is just, oh, there's so much gold in there. So enjoy today's episode with Tia Johnson on overcoming energetic blocks. Hey there, everybody. Jenny here. Welcome to Get Gutsy. Let's go. We have a lot of ground to cover, as we always do. A really cool conversation ahead of us. So strap on your seatbelts. We are going places today. Let me introduce you to our guest. Her name is Tia Johnson and I know that we're going to have a lot of fun together because she's all into spirituality like me and business like me and that tends to be a really potent combination. Based in the great city of Philly, Philadelphia, Tia Johnson is a spiritual life coach, international speaker, and best-selling author. She loves helping spiritually centered people crack the code of their intuitive gifts and overcome energetic blocks. Welcome to the show, Tia. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So how, how did you figure out that you love helping spiritually centered people crack the code of their intuitive gifts? Like, how did you find yourself into, into this world? Well, yeah, it just goes back to, oh gosh, seven years now. So I started uh, my business after I went on a spiritual healing journey. And at the time, I didn't know it was a, a, a healing journey. Um, so yeah, my grandmother had passed away from cancer. And then my pop pop had passed away a year and a half after that from a broken heart. Mm. So what I did was, yeah, it was very trying time. So what I did was I started diving more into myself to figure out what was going on in my life. Who am I really and what am I truly meant to do? Right. So what I had learned in the process is that there is something else out there, that that force, that energy that really helps us 
really uh, move on in life and, and create things. So when it came to helping people crack the code there and chew the gifts, it's really a result of me going through the healing journey and understanding what's meditation, what's yoga, what's mm-hmm. Reiki. So mm-hmm. that's how I help people by really diving into what are these modalities and how it applies to them. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So you dove into those modalities yourself and then realized how transformative they were and now you introduce these to your people? Yes, yes. So uh, what I do is I tend to blend things. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I hardly ever just use Reiki without angel therapy. So yeah, I I combine um, dream interpretation with Mm -hmm. angels sometimes or crystals Mm -hmm. in dreams. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I definitely have a a mixture that I use to help people. Mm, Yes, yes. I love all that stuff. Crystals, angels, the whole thing. So So (laughs) what were you doing like at the time that you had this you wanted this spiritual healing journey for yourself. What were you doing for work at that time? So uh, I I was getting certificates in um, dream interpretation and crystal healing. Mm-hmm. So what I did was um, I first started off with the beta testers. You know, mm-hmm. you got to test people first mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. test yourself mm-hmm. using people. So I started off with that. And, and then I started to promote myself as a crystal healer mm-hmm. once I, I had that certificate and I passed the, the class. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I started off as a dream interpreter, a crystal healer. And that's how I promoted myself as someone who can help people heal on that spiritual level as mm-hmm. a co-pilot to the, the physical realm. Mm-hmm. And prior to that, like, were you in a totally different line of work? Like prior to your spiritual healing journey, when your grandparents, you know, passed away in close succession, were you doing something totally different, you know, in your career that then you needed to transition out of to then pursue, you know, just to really tap into your gifts and, and follow this, this spiritual path? Yes, and when I tell people this, they crack up because it's on the opposite end. Well, what, it's like accounting, <laughs> like, I don't know, something with, like, numbers or something. Well, actually, uh, I, I I purchased military aircraft parts, so I work okay. for the uh, Department <laughs> of Defense. So, <laughs> those f you see up there, I'm part of the supply planning of that. So, yes, I help, and in my way defend the, the country and and then there's the sp- spiritual part which has to do with healing mm-hmm. so people get a kick out of that yeah it was it's really um me uh, getting involved in contracts so yeah very office type job mm-hmm. um not much room for spirituality or creativity mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> yeah and so how did you make that how did you navigate you know, out of that, like when you realize like there's something else out there, you had this death that you were grieving from, like two deaths. And so, so, cause I know a lot of our listeners are in that place where they're like, okay, there's, there is something else out there. I need to make a move. I got to go. And I'm, I'm in this like traditional space or this, you know, this career that I've been successful and I'm good at it, but yet I want to do something different. So tell us about your, how you, how you manage that transition. Yeah, so it it goes back to my childhood days where I would experience different things. So I would have some visions mm-hmm. or some dreams that later I found out was an angel or a premonition. So what I did was to help me through this process of coming from the, I don't want to say mundane, but coming from a, a, a lifestyle where I did what I what I was supposed to do, go to school, get a job, have that social life to more of a spiritual understanding of cycles is to read a lot. I read a lot. I mean, I started off with just maybe one or two books and now I have <laughs> multiple book, book uh, shelves and mm-hmm. it's crazy. So to help me through that transitional period, I read a lot. I did a lot of self-work. Mm-hmm. So um, I really had to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, th- just reading a lot and, and opening myself to understanding what does it mean to work with a crystal or understand the energies of mm-hmm. angels and so forth. Mm, yes, yes. I love that. And and like how did you get the courage up to to quit that job or to walk away from that that world if if I don't know if you've done that or if that's like part of your your path yet, but just curious cuz I know a lot of people struggle with that. Yeah, well, it's it's part of the paths. So, I had to 
well, I've, I've done some of the calculations, but some of the mm-hmm. things I would suggest to people is to calculate your lifestyle. So uh, if you go out to Leonard, uh, Leonard, I could buy the lunch and dinner. <laughs> yeah, dinner. I know. Dinner. I always wonder why don't they have they have brunch? Why can't we have dinner? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you go out to lunch and dinner uh, several times a week. What does that look like for you? Um, also, talk to people who help with insurance or so insurance agents. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just really figure out all your expenses and, and then add a couple more thousand dollars to that. So that way you have that buffer to save mm-hmm. and things like that. So that's what I did. I am. Um, uh, really paying close attention to my expenses mm-hmm. and uh, you know you have that due date in mind so even if someone says okay December 31st I'm done mm-hmm. and it takes you to maybe July next year that's okay but we need to have that firm date mm-hmm. we need to have, well our initial firm date mm-hmm. we need to figure out our lifestyle and expenses and of course what we want to do going forward forward so yeah it's, it's, it's that thought process that I'm undergoing right now mm, okay got it got it so how does one really crack the code of their intuitive gifts like what what is your perception of that and and how does like how do we know what what those are I really want our listeners to like get this because it's so important and I want to hear your take on it Oh, absolutely. This is one of my favorite things to talk about mm-hmm. because uh, we we have a combination of uh, intuitive gifts. So what I do is I narrow it down t- to four major clears, which means uh, like that clear scene, so clear sentient. So what I would do is I would ask people what they experience and when they experience something, where do they feel that in their body? Mm-hmm. So by clear, I mean the clear sentient, which means clear feeling, mm-hmm. uh, clairvoyant, which is clear seeing, mm-hmm. clear audience, which is clear healing, he- uh, he- hearing, mm-hmm. excuse me, and clear cognizant, which is clearly knowing. And mm-hmm. there are a couple more clears, but those are the main ones. Yeah. So, when people uh, say to me, uh, or where someone says to me, for example, oh, you know what? I, I keep hearing this this nudge, or I keep feeling this nudge, and uh, I, I just en- envision this. You know, that's part of their intuitive gifts. So mm-hmm. I help them to really understand that it's not a coincidence. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're like Harry Potter when he realizes he can speak to the snakes. Like, oh wow, wait, I can do that. So I help them to put a name to that uh, gift Mm -hmm. and I help them to hone in on it by practicing different things and helping them to acknowledge Mm -hmm. uh, what would trigger that uh, um, gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. So you're naming it, you're really getting clear like how do you how do you roll in terms of like just the way we were designed and then how do you work with that in a powerful way? I, for me, I'm very much I very much relate to the clairvoyance and the clairaudient. I think, I mean, from your practice, like, do we have, like, pieces of each of them, but maybe we're stronger, we're strongest in one or two of the clairs? Mm, Absolutely, absolutely. There Mm -hmm. are people who are extremely clairvoyant, Mm -hmm. and they're somewhat clairsentient, Mm -hmm. and there are some people who are more Mm claircognizant, and they would be called the Mm -hmm. (laughs) know-it-alls. Sometimes they tune that down a little little bit Mm -hmm. because they don't want you know, sometimes they don't like to be called that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, there's definitely people who have uh, two stronger clears and Mm -hmm. some that are not so strong. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I had like, I think Claire audience, especially for me is like, um, I, I hear things that it's just like, it's super clear. It's like names of programs will just, just be dropped into me. Um, It's like someone is just talking to me and I know for, I'm really into angels Uh, my sister who passed away when I was in high school she's one of my angels and uh, what was it like I don't know a year and a half ago or something she totally just dropped the name of my mastermind into my ear it was wild I was up late one night and I was really struggling to try to name this thing because I had um, I had led a mastermind for several years but I was ready to evolve and be called something new and I just couldn't figure out like what was it going to be called and I just heard this voice inside and it said glow and I started laughing hysterically because 
I remembered when her and I used to watch uh, <laughs> this – women's wrestling show back when we were kids and it was called gorgeous ladies of wrestling and you know people called it glow and so i just started laughing because i remember us you know staying up you know quote late on a friday night watching Mm -hmm. glow like we were obsessed with it and just remembering that time feeling grateful for that memory because i hadn't thought of it in a long time and then from there it was like wait hold on no this is it like this is the name this is the name of the mastermind it's called glow and you know in my business it it was going to stand for gutsy leaders of wisdom. Like my whole brand mm-hmm. is about gutsy. And so it was like, oh my. and so that was it. I have so many though. Sometimes it's, it can feel freaky because they they happen a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're like, okay, it's not, I'm not trying to think of this stuff right now. I'm, I'm just chilling. I'm doing this other thing. I'm in the shower, but yet <laughs> it's just, it's just coming. And so I want our listeners to take that in. Cause we have a very, you know, spiritually tuned in bunch who, who who listen to this podcast regularly that's why I love you know putting it out into the world because you know not everybody identifies themselves as spiritual i believe that we do all have spiritual gifts but many of us um have have you know tuned them out or numbed ourselves and you know just not mm-hmm. known what to do with them and so when we can just say hey here's how it might feel or sound or look like and and it's a gift and you want to work with it instead of being freaked out by it that's you know that's when the real you know power comes into the mix and and we become you know just this this force of light in the world and the cool thing is is like we realize that what we have you know nobody has it exactly like us mm-hmm. and we want to have that courage to put it out there and trust that, you know, the, the messages that we're receiving, the signals that we're receiving, they're from the divine. Like, they're freaking good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. I remember when I interviewed a couple of people just doing some market research, uh-huh. and one of the, the words that came up often was weirdo. You know, they didn't mm-hmm. want to feel like they were uh, a, a weirdo to people. And a reason for that is, like, what you were just saying you know once we really get comfortable with that because it happens so often Mm -hmm. we won't feel out of place you know Mm -hmm. it would just become something normal in a sense yeah absolutely absolutely and to you know be able to have these conversations and to know that there's nothing wrong with you you know like you're that's it's it's powerful and and again, you can't have these conversations with everybody because some people will think like, what is she smoking? You know, like, um, <laughs> and you're like, no, this really happened. You know, one of the most uh, amazing uh, kind of messages I received was from my daughter who I hadn't even conceived yet. This is a few years back. And I mean, distinct, clear as day, this voice of a, it was a girl's voice came in. And at that point I had two sons. I didn't have a daughter yet. And I, we didn't know for sure that we wanted to have more kids. It wasn't like, okay, we got to have another child now. It was just kind of like, all right, we're doing our thing. And this voice just came, just just talked to me, you know? And it was, it was just very clear, very calm. Mom, I'm ready to join our family. I'm ready wow. to join our family. And I was like, wait, hold on. What? Wait, what is that? Where does that come from? And, and it just, I had to get comfortable with it because it was a little bit, you know, um, kind of overwhelming and I wasn't sure that I had it within me to expand again as a mother and and to trust that but I did I trusted that voice and you know I will never forget just just like really inviting her in and saying okay let's go it's we <laughs> the conditions are there it's time yeah. and and I and, and she and it was her you know and we didn't find out the sex of any of our kids until they were born and you know sure as day the her birthday it you know remember I don't even remember who said it to me because I was like what you know what is it because I just went through this birth and I'm like I feel like it was a girl but you know you don't totally know until you know and Mm -hmm. and someone I I feel like it was probably just an angel in the room maybe it was my sister someone whispered in my ear it's a girl and it was just like oh I broke down I was like I trusted the voice you know (laughs) I I trusted the voice yeah and so you know even within our business we can trust the voice we can trust the voice that says go launch that program go talk to that person go offer that up um you know ask for the sale put that email out there say what you really want to say go to that event you know sign up for this thing join that say no to this like there are voices that we hear all the time you know for those of us who are who are clear audience and then for those of you who have like visions or feelings i think the 
the the beauty of the spiritual path is to is to truly trust that and to mm-hmm. not push it away because when we push it away that is when we eventually fall off course and mm-hmm. we know it and it's like intense and we start having these dark nights of the soul and you know breakdowns and all of that so when somebody is experiencing an energetic block i know this is an area of your expertise you know how do we know we're energetically blocked and what can we do to get unblocked So ways we know we are uh, experiencing an energetic block is through feeling like something is just stagnant or maybe we plateau or maybe we're going backwards when we feel like we should be going forward. It's something in most cases that we can't quite put our finger on, but we can realize there's something going on there. So it's similar to a a writer's block, Mm -hmm. but... We just got to shift the gear. So when we are going through a writer's block, sometimes we just need to take a break, you know, get a cup of coffee, relax. But when we have an energetic block, sometimes we have to cleanse our energy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need to talk to someone who can give us that objective view. Mm -hmm. And for example, I was, uh, my best friend paid me a visit. I'm recovering from foot surgery. Mm -hmm. And we just pulled cards. You know, I had uh, my Oracle cards on the table. Mm -hmm. And so she was able to notice something about me that I in real life something that I found out was stagnant in my life Mm -hmm. so a lot of times we just really have to look outward so we have to ask someone to give us a reading Mm -hmm. (laughs) sometimes or read our energy Mm -hmm. we have to literally leave the environment so that means going on vacation so yes you can say Tia said I need to go on a vacation (laughs) right go on vacation take yourself out of that environment and if anyone needs further backing for that because I know sometimes uh, when people go on vacation they think about the money and Mm -hmm. and, you know how long think about civilizations uh, when they do the rite of passage for a woman or a guy they would take them out from the community and have them go somewhere else where they'd be with all the males or something like that where they can go through this transition period so let this be your transition period Mm -hmm. where you take yourself out of whatever's normal for you you know out of the house somewhere else and let someone else do an energy reading for you so those are the two things i recommend Mm -hmm. uh above all else to help get out of that energetic block Mm -hmm. yeah i love getting readings and for all you listeners if you've never done that before you know had somebody read your tarot cards or um you know an intuitive it is such a wonderful experience i've worked with astro wealth numerologist and my first ever reading was I I was in college and I just remember how much it blew my mind because it was I would never done that before and it just (laughs) showed me that there's so much more going on that that we can't see and we can we can trust it though even if it feels like you know foreign or Mm -hmm. kind of you know out of our comfort zone like there are people out there who have these gifts to read and and that's that's good you know, and we don't have to go through this life on our own, just like pushing through and, um, you know, just slogging along and, and thinking that, you know, every day it's just about like getting up, going to work, having dinner and then going to bed and then doing the same thing tomorrow. Like there's just so much more to life than that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I really want our, our people to, to take that in. So what have been some of the biggest challenges that you've encountered as you have, you know, risen higher in, in your work and, and served, you know, more clients? Well, definitely uh, having that, can I do it again feeling? Because with spirituality, you're really putting yourself out there mm-hmm. and you had to make people feel comfortable to open themselves to you. So uh, what, what I do is I, well, I, I like to call this the trifecta of tea. I have a mirror in my bathroom and it comes out on both sides. So mm-hmm. I look at myself and I, and I use the if-then statement. I talk about this in my book and I say, if I can talk in front of five people, I can then I can talk in front of 15 people. Mm-hmm. And it really helps me to get comfortable mm-hmm. with allowing myself to be open so that mm-hmm. way people can know, like, and trust me. So mm-hmm. that's really something that, I had to keep in check. It's like, Tia, it's okay. You know, spirituality is going to be one of those things where people are going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's going to feel a little crazy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it's okay. If you feel comfortable with with yourself, then people will feel comfortable to open up and, and giving names to what they are experiencing. 
Yeah, and I think what's helpful too is you look around and you really see the numbers of people who have brought you know, spirituality into the quote more mainstream and they're doing pretty well you know it's like they haven't died um because they you know spoke about this work like it's 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 wanted you know there's a real hunger for connection and for being able to speak life into uh, some of the challenges that people encounter, especially those who are going through grief, you know, that's what it was for you. Like definitely mm-hmm. for me when my sister died as a teenager and then I had two other deaths like very close, like you had two pretty much in a row. I had three in a row and they mm-hmm. were all young people and and very close to me. And so that was, it was just excruciatingly painful. And so you're you're like you're getting through it some way and often it well for me it was not pretty it was not pretty the way I was getting through it but I I did get through it you know I'm I'm Mm -hmm. still here I made some unhealthy choices for a lot of those years as I was healing but it opened me up to this this part of life that honestly when when you know the shit hits the fan or when stuff starts like going all wonky this is where people really need support you know mm-hmm. when things are going great that's awesome and yeah we gotta have support around that too because sometimes we can upper limit and we're like oh my gosh do i deserve it but it's when things are you know rough like when you lose somebody close to you or you know when when you just get thrown a curveball and that's when we really need something you know we need that foundation we need to trust that there's something bigger going on here and that we're going to be safe and if we as spiritual teachers and guides like can provide that refuge for our people Mm -hmm. then I feel like then we've done our jobs oh absolutely as much as I still you know Christmas and birthdays you know I think about my grandparents who passed away and even Mm -hmm. my cousin who passed away a couple years after that who I was very close to Mm -hmm. um if it wasn't for the deaths of my grandparents i would not have started this business Mm -hmm. i would have still been walking around knowing that there's something more to what i'm seeing but not quite getting it it would have been a huge delay in my life Mm -hmm. like a very huge delay right because um i as i said earlier i had an active social life Mm -hmm. nice job got a college degree did everything i thought i was supposed to do in society but live for me yes so very very tragic yes still cry every now and then totally but in a way it was a weird kind of blessing Mm-hmm. yeah yeah and I feel like that that is what it is I believe that we have these you know sacred contracts with people in our lives and so, you know when we're going through it 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 often just feels like super unfair and you're wondering like why did this happen you know I I just want yeah. this person back in my life and I don't like this lesson or what's going on here but when we can trust that there there is a reason and that we are strong enough to handle anything that comes our way we know that there is um you know that we both have you know if it's you and another person that there's this kind of divine assignment that there were that we're both on and I my take and I've had a lot of times my sister died more than 20 years ago so I've had a lot of time to like ponder this and live with it is that we you know when we're souls before we we come here on the planet we basically like say yes to an assignment it's like okay yeah I want to do that that sounds good and we come on in and then we forget what that assignment is once we get here and then we spend all our time like needing to remember what the assignment is and being given lots of ways to remember the assignment it's not always easy not always pretty or clean and and there's you know we're often like hooked up with somebody to help fulfill these grand assignments and so I actually a number of years ago did an intuitive session with a woman and she she's she channels you know she channels energy so she channeled my sister she's able to channel and I like literally had a conversation with her it was amazing and And what I got from that was that my sister, her name is Julie, she's doing this work on the other side. And Mm -hmm. that we both, like there really wasn't space for for both of us to be here. And so that we needed, like she, it was her assignment basically to go to that other side and to do the work. And by her doing that was like, I got all this freaking practice with, you know, how to work with grief and how to work Mm -hmm. with, you know, things that are out of your control 
and you know being able to connect with energies that that you can't necessarily see in the physical sense but absolutely are there so for all you listeners out there who are experiencing you know grief or loss or disappointment frustration things that you're like oh i wish i could change this what i have learned is that there's a reason behind it all and you may not know for years decades Mm -hmm. and it's okay Yes, absolutely. So, so true. A lot of things do unravel years later because during the time when they passed away, Mm -hmm. I was definitely going through the the stages of grief. I made my plea to God. I thought it was a nightmare. I would lay in bed thinking, okay, I'm going to close my eyes really hard Mm -hmm. and, you know, make myself go to sleep. And when I wake up, they will be here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But but again, I've been able to help so many people since then. So that was seven seven years ago now mm. so i like since then it's just i understand myself so much more on a deeper mm. deeper level and i just I, again I'm, I'm just able to help so many people and i have helped so many people mm-hmm. so that's that's a very rewarding thing yeah yeah that's just really well said do you have conversations with your grandparents still is there kind of like an angelic force are they some of your angels Yes, actually, through my dreams, uh, mm-hmm. every now and then, uh, they will pop up. My my papa came into my dream to give me a heads up about a foot surgery. He was the, the one who would go to my uh, doctor's appointments with me because my mom would be at work, and so he would go with me. Um, yeah, it, it it's just it's really interesting how they just pop up in dreams and give me heads up. You know, little little what, what I like to call life sign pose. Like, okay, you're, you're all right. You're, you're, it's gonna be okay. So <laughs> yeah, mainly in in dreams or. Um, songs mm-hmm. uh my pop pop and i we have three songs and they're they're 80 songs i'm a huge fan of 80s music so every time like tears for fears come on like oh my god it's my you know pop pop yes <laughs> totally yeah music is a great way like when you hear that song like for me it happens too when i'm you know maybe having like just a challenging day i've got a lot going on and it's like okay i can do this thing and i have three kids so sometimes when i'm flying solo with them my husband's working whatever and we'll like pop into wherever we pop into and there's a song on that I'm like yes you know it's like <laughs> Fleetwood Mac is my all-time favorite band so when like Fleetwood Mac's going Stevie Nicks I'm like oh yeah like I am I am supported right now I am not doing this alone this is a co-creative team effort and it's all good <laughs> uh, yes it's all good <laughs> yeah so it's like songs signs certain people will deliver messages to you that's why I love this podcast so much because I feel like every guest will deliver a message that I'm meant to receive and I'm like okay thank you and so our listeners out there I'm, I know that you're getting certain messages that you're like yes that that was what I needed today to keep going you know stay focused stay on the path because it's not always you know a smooth ride we're gonna get hit with some bumps and some stuff that we are like no so when we can you know join together and realize like that there is something larger going on here and that we can have these really deep genuine conversations with other people who get it that is the coolest feeling in the world so Tia where can people go to find out more about your work yeah, so I am on Instagram at Tia underscore Johnson underscore, and that's the same thing for Twitter and Periscope. Mm-hmm. They can also visit me uh, on my website, which is TiaMarieJohnson.com, okay. and I'm in my Facebook group every single day, which is Spiritual and Empowerment Living. Mm, cool. Spiritual and Empowerment Living. Awesome. Very, very, very cool. Listen, so you are one gutsy woman that definitely came across in today's conversation, and I'm really curious to know the answer to our finale question, which is, what is the gutsiest move you've ever made, and how does it inspire your life and work today? Wow, yeah, the gutsiest move I, move I ever made was self-publishing my first book. Mm. And the reason why I was so gutsy is because I was very self-conscious about my teeth. Now I have braces, mm. um, but back then my teeth were not straight. Uh I was not the size I wanted to be <laughs> at the mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. I did it all out of pocket. So in Philly, uh we have a couple of historical uh, building so I had it at the Please Touch Museum mm-hmm. So and um, and I commute everywhere so I had to uh, and this is before Uber guys mm-hmm. so this is like not only gutsy but raw gutsy. Yeah. 
<laughs> so I use my, my own funds with uh, my not so million dollar smile. Uh, I, I had to uh, solicit a photographer. So it was really a, a gutsy hustle. I was very nervous because some of my friends showed up to my book launch. My mom, stepdad were there. Um, so it, it's, it's one thing when you are around strangers, mm -hmm. but when you are presenting your works in front of people you care about, mm -hmm. it's just like, oh my gosh, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, oh my gosh. So yeah, that was so, so, so gutsy to do that because I mean, to really explain how much I was so conscious about my teeth, I used to Photoshop my teeth. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was so serious. So that that was really gutsy of me for mm -hmm. um, just not changing my teeth, just being who I was at that time, just honoring mm -hmm. this is me, and so be it. Yes. Uh, and uh, and it, it really impacted my life because now I feel like if I can do that, then I can do anything I want to do. That's right. So, uh, I mean, now I have braces that they are coming off this summer. Woo! <laughs> you did it, girl. Uh, yeah, and I, I go to the gym more often now. So it's it's um it's really just one of those things where when, when you need to go back to the drawing board, when you have one of those moments of oh, should I do this? I don't know. Can I do this? And it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You did this with less than <laughs> many mm -hmm. years ago, so you can definitely do it now. So yeah. that's my gutsy is moving that's how it impacted my life mm -hmm. I love that for lots of reasons one is like you were self-conscious about your teeth but that didn't stop you from moving forward with this project getting the photos done and then you said you know what and I can change that I can get braces and it's okay to have braces as an adult and so kudos to you for that you also said you started going to the gym and you know feeling better in your body so you you didn't just say like well that's my lot in life and I'm just gonna like bitch and complain about that I did that several years back because my teeth were not perfectly straight and that started bothering me I could have gotten braces when I was younger and we just like never did for whatever reason I always always like frustrated with my mom like why didn't you just get me the braces I remember the dentist being like she doesn't really need them I'm like but I did um and so I ended up getting Invisalign a few years back because I just said my teeth aren't going to magically just become straight because I want them to like you actually have to do that you know like yeah. you've got to go invest in in making that happen I love myself regardless but I knew I could change it. And so it's like what I've learned is either you stop thinking about it or you change it. And mm -hmm. and if you can change it, then go do that instead of just like bitching and complaining about it or being like oh, or feeling bad about it, which so many people do. What's the name of your book? Uh, uh, the well, the first one is, is called To Be Goddess, Every Woman is a Goddess. Mm -hmm. Discover your domain. It's long, the title. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Discover your domain in which you reign supreme. Mm -hmm. And my second book is called How to Get to the Point in Your Life. Mm, love it. And find those on Amazon? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Self-publishing, I, I have one book under my belt, so congrats to you for the two. Um, it's intense. You know, just that process is, brings up a lot. And uh, I went through different stuff when I was self-publishing my first, but I remember just feeling like super vulnerable, super exposed. You're doing it on your own dime, you know, and so you're making investments there. I was being, you know, very uh, courageous and transparent, sharing certain things that I had never shared in that way before, and it brought up a lot for me, and it's led to so much. My book, Get Gutsy, led to the creation of this podcast, led to the creation of my coaching school, has led to the creation of my membership community, and, you know, I'm so grateful for that. So good for you for your books, and I hope our listeners really get inspired by our journeys there, and if they have a book inside of them, they need to unleash that baby in the world. Absolutely. I mean, listeners, please, 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 please do not believe that your story is not worthy enough, is not long enough, or you think no one's going to hear it, whatever doubt you have, because I'm telling you, just when you think no one is interested, there is someone out there mm -hmm. somewhere in the world who is waiting for you, mm -hmm. for your story. You have to believe that I am telling you. Mm -hmm. Think about all the wildly successful people. Mm -hmm. Think about it. They never did what they have, what they are known to have done. Think about that. You could be just like that in your own right. So please, yes, get your story out there as in any way, shape, or form. I don't care if it's a blog post. Yep. And 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 you know it can work its way out to a book. That was mm -hmm. my second book. It was a blog post. Yeah. So you can definitely do that, but you have to get your story out there. Yes. Yep. I back that up. You will not regret it. It may feel a little like, oh my gosh, but. 
It's so worth it. And I know all of our listeners, y'all are, you know, putting out your body of work in the world. You are here to help people. And the way that you help people is to share. So get out there and share and trust that it is going to be an extraordinary journey. And your story is absolutely worth putting out there. Tia, it's been amazing having you on the show. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I I had so much fun. Yeah, yeah. I love these convos. It's like, it's really good too because I work from home and and so it's really, it's awesome to have these uh, connections with people who get it. (laughs) And I feel like, okay, all right, yeah. Because sometimes you do feel like a real weirdo. You're like, I'm just, I work behind this thing and and I have these visions or these messages that come in. Does does anybody else have this stuff? (laughs) And you're like, yeah, Yeah. they do. Wait for it to happen. Like, okay, like, Mm -hmm. no one believes me. I'm just going to sit back here and drink my tea and when it happens I'm just going to go yep <laughs> yep and I'm just going to keep me I'm just going to put it out there and make that thing real because I appreciate these gifts and I'm not pushing them away any longer all you listeners out there thanks for being with us this is Jenny Fennig sending you so much love light and faith as you get gutsy I will see you next time hey this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire and you're listening to Get Gutsy with Jenny Fennig gutsy leaders unite and ignore Ignite. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Get Gutsy as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. Are you responsible for leading and growing your spiritual business? If so, I have a free tool for you that will help you spread your message like wildfire. It's called the Sacred Marketing Puzzle, and it's a one-page PDF guide that simplifies the often mysterious and confusing world of marketing. When you use sacred marketing tools to amplify your message, you'll provide huge value to your tribe and grow your business. What are you waiting for? Go to jennyfennick.com slash puzzle to get yours instantly. That's jennyfennick.com slash puzzle. Gutsy leaders, unite.